Hey, Brandon, can you hear us now? Okay, perfect. Okay. I may need to grab your audio recording and splice some of the audio in on the front if it's, I'll have to listen to it when we're done. But Okay, okay. Uh, at this time, we'll open up the uh, floor for public comments. Anybody looking to address the board, we ask that you come step to the podium to the microphone and that you clearly state your name and address and also sign in at the front. So it's up there that Kelly's in the waiting room. Okay, thank you. You Kelly or different Kelly? <laughs> um, okay, seeing no desire for public comment, we'll move on to the next item. Uh, it's the first main item of the agenda, which is the Act 537. Uh, the SEO had been doing inspections in the Northwest and East districts. However, he submitted his resignation. Uh, originally, that was going to be through the end of the year, uh, but due to changes in circumstance, he has to essentially resign effective immediately. So I think the, the first item on the agenda is to uh, regretfully accept the the motion, yeah. or excuse me, the uh, the resignation. We so I'll make them. We, uh, did we already we, did that. We did? Okay, okay, thank you. Um, I didn't know if we like accepted it contingent upon the end of the year or hadn't accepted it because he was good through the end of the year. Said, yeah. Did it contingent upon appointing a new FC? Okay. So, I mean, he's, he's out. So we're six, one half dozen the other. Um, with this said, that does create a vacuum. We need to appoint an SEO. Uh, we talked a little bit about this at the workshop meeting where we're going to be taking kind of a twofold approach. We're going to be appointing system design engineering as the primary SEO. Uh, for the usual design, permitting, et cetera, related work. Uh, and we'll be appointing uh, Hydroterra as the secondary SEO. And they'll be- I forgot to put a motion on there. You have to make a motion. No motion was made yet. Okay. Well, I'm just, I'm discussing. I'm okay. recapping okay. for Saturday. Thank, okay. thank you for the reminder though. Um, so they'll be handling the actual sewer management program, the reminders, the follow-ups, all the, the bits and bobs to making sure that we stay compliant. Um, the dovetail on this is that we will be uh, changing our ordinance to allow haulers to do the inspections. Um, since we don't have uh, the capacity or the proximity between the two SEO firms to, to follow the pump trucks around like we did with Allen, um, we're going to need to have another mechanism to actually do the inspection. So, uh, Colin, I had a question for you. When the pumpers, the way that the, the law is written, they have to register with us, and when they're out, they're effectively an agent of the township, which means that we are we are liable if something happens. Um, is there something that we need to do with the haulers as part of that registration that would potentially absolve us or indemnify us from like some wrongdoing that they did? Maybe the township has an additional insured on its okay. certificate of insurance. Is probably the best move to take. Okay. Yeah, because we definitely want to do that, because that was the one thing that was a lingering concern for me was when they're registered with us and they go out to perform the service for us, they're effectively no different than the road crew. If they do something stupid, then it's on us. So if we have a little bit of armor there in the sense that we're, we're named on certificate insurance, if that passes uh, the sniff test from a legal sense, then that's really the thing that I was concerned about. No, I, I think, like I said, I think having a hauler name in the township as an additional insured is, would be uh, you know, sub substantial, substantially protect the township. I, I would say I don't, I don't necessarily know if they're, if they would be considered our agent. Um, ultimately, the sewer management program mandates that the property owners comply by pumping out systems mm -hmm. and the haulers are are filling out a report attesting to the fact that the owner has hired them to do so yeah but uh, and this is where i'm again not a lawyer but it, it seemed very very worded in the sense that rather than them doing it for the homeowner it seemed very much like they were doing the report for us 
Like it's it's a requirement that it's inspected, but well, the it's report just a, it's a it's a provision of our ordinance that ensures really that, that we know the property owners are complying with our local law. Okay. So is that is that really enough to make the hauler be deemed an agent of the township if something happens? Maybe okay. at best. I'm not too concerned about that, especially if they're named as if they name us as an additional insured on their insurance certificate. Okay. So that's we just I mean, it's just in other words, it's a it's a filling out the inspection report is just a condition of doing business in the township under our local law. Okay. Well, if, if you're not worried about it, I will. I'm, I, I'm not too worried, but again, I think I think it's just a good idea okay. to have us named as an additional insured. Okay. Chuck, do you, you have any do you have hurt. Hurt. Yeah. yeah. And then the hall carries that. Expense. Right. Sure. Okay. Yes. There's still, so there, So we're going to look at what the fees are, and then we will adjust the fees accordingly. So there is still a cost with administrating the program, sending out letters and things like that. But honestly speaking, it should be less. So we'll see that levy come down. First year, it'll come down a bit. Second, third, fourth years, it'll come down some more once everything is, is set up and we've gone through a full cycle of things and it becomes a little more rote. But there is a, a, still a little bit of a cost that those of us who have on-lot systems will have as a levy. Yes. Can you can you get yeah, up and talk which, into the microphone? Yeah, you cannot hear yeah. anything from the audience unless you speak on the microphone. It is Richard Trotman. Uh, are are you going to send letters out to the people or, or yes. how the people? Yeah. What I want to know. So the game plan here is we're going to send out a letter that contains kind of the update, letting people know what the situation is, what to expect, how to go about doing this, that we're going to be reaching out to the, the pumpers that are businesses in the area to let them know of the change in the ordinance that they can, they can do this service now. Um, there is always the option if you want to have the SEO come out and do it. But honestly speaking, it probably will be a little more direct and a little cheaper to have the pumper do it. Um, some people were maintaining that the pumper will just do it at no cost. If that's true, that's fantastic. Otherwise, they probably are going to charge for the, the time and effort of doing a proper actual inspection. But that's between you as the homeowner and them as the pumper. So, And they, I will say, the, the idea is that the sewer management program will be automated through hydro terrorist application. I don't know if, we've, if the board has spoken about that at all at a meeting, but, it, but essentially, um, they'll send out auto-generated mm -hmm. notifications to property owners here's the application. So that that hopefully will reduce the cost of the township's administration. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what I was alluding to. The first year, once everything gets rolling, it'll start to come down just by the virtue of people being aware of it, people getting used to it, the automation aspect of it, that once everybody kind of settles into the routine of this, it's, it's going to be very minimal. And we kind of knew that going in. And that's what we had said with the, the levy is it's, it's going to cost to do this but then it'll it'll adjust once everything settles in. So. With that said, we will need to make a motion to just, to kind of codify what we just talked about with appointing uh, Chuck, uh, uh, System Design Engineering, as the primary SEO. Uh, so Sue, I'll make a motion to appoint System Design Engineering as the primary sewage enforcement officer for Marion Township. Second. Roll we'll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. And Sue, so just a point of clarification, that, that would be Scott McCaffrey. S-C-O-T, one T, McCaffrey, M-C-C-A-F-F-R-E-Y. Okay. And then we have alternates. We, have, we had identified um, four alternates in our office that could fill in. In absence of Scott, and Scott will be the primary. Okay. Okay. Now I'll make a motion to appoint Hydro Terror Professionals as the alternate SEL and managers of the sewer management program. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Moving through. Yes, Kelly. 
Yeah. So the the only uh, just for the fact that the, the recording probably didn't capture that uh, somebody in the audience asks if we could use any pump service. The answer is yes. The only stipulation is that they have to be registered with the township. The the legal requirement is they have to register with us so we know that they're they're out there doing it. Um, which then the system that is going to automatically take that form in and the reason that it's going to get less intensive and less costly over time is they're able to submit it in, in a cookie cutter sort of format directly to Hydra Terra, who can then get it in DEP's format pretty much with a click of a button and send it on its way. So it should be a real nice, easy, streamlined thing. Yeah, they would just be, they'll, they should know. And like I said, we're going to send out letters to all the, the big names. Basically, we'll do a yellow pages search and we'll send everybody a letter. If you're a sewage management or a, like a septic pumping service, um, if anybody new enters the game or you know comes into the area or from outside the area, then that might be a little different. But all you should have to do is call the pumper. Pumper should know the ins and outs of it. If you're really on the ball, just remind them that we have a sewage management program and you have to, you have to talk to the township and they can call the office or any, any number of different avenues to get in touch with HydroTerra. Okay, uh, on the Act 537, before we move on, um, uh, Joe Baldez and uh, Kim Barosa were here and we discussed uh, some of the draft milestones, the schedule, the special study, some of the, the specifics of that. We didn't go too far into the weeds, but um, DEP is okay with the special study. We had that conversation with them at that meeting. Um, the draft milestone schedule is going to be contingent upon a couple other things. So they're kind of waiting for that, but there's not a, I'd say a hard deadline that we have to meet for that. Um, and some of that I believe is the geotech study, which is going to be getting started. I know Sue said that they started doing PA1 calls for some things. So they should be doing some field work about that. Um, we did get an LSA grant, which should cover a lot of the costs for this particular study. And it was for this sort of thing, this exact sort of thing for getting prepped for a an Act 537 project. So we'll wait to hear back from that. Um, I guess the last thing is, uh, Colin, do we have um, a draft or is the draft still in progress for the um, uh, intermissible agreement between us and the Walmart Service Sewer Authority? So the, the Agreement, a, a first draft of the agreement was submitted to council for the Wilmersdorf Sewer Authority back in January. The parties are finally meeting to discuss the contents of that agreement in July at the board's pleasure, of course. That meeting would involve myself, Andy, uh, Hydroterra, Council for WSA, and their engineer, Kevin Conrad, oh, as, as well as uh, uh, Mr. Hurst, who is the potential developer of the 70 yeah. lot subdivision in the township. So all of those you know, players and professional consultants will be involved in a meeting at my office in mid July. Okay, very good. So ho hopefully we'll make progress and the parties can move forward with that agreement. Okay, very good. Okay, I went slightly out of order so we already appointed okay. the SEO, so. Okay. Um, uh, Kim, since you're here, is there anything that you want to you add or do or are we good? Thank you. Okay, uh, next is the Mangate Holding Tank Agreement and escrow. Uh, they have actually decided not to proceed with the subdivision of their property. Uh, they're no longer, as a result, going to be putting a holding tank in and would like their escrow money returned. Um, I'll defer to Colin, but my opinion on this is unless there's fees that we had incurred that would come out of that escrow, they're not putting a tank in. So... No tank escrow. Yeah, I, I would just recommend that the party sign a, a short and simple release agreement whereby the township agrees to release the escrow in exchange for the property owner's promise that they won't subdivide or develop the land without adequate sewage in the form of a holding tank or connection okay. to the public sewer. Is that something we would need to get from you or is it something that like if Sue types something up stating pretty much exactly that, that, you know, we acknowledge that we're releasing the funds to you, but you acknowledge that you're not doing blah, blah, blah. Is it just 
eight and a half by 11 okay or does it have to be something no, legally no, official no offense to sue yeah. I, can okay. do, I can do that pretty quick okay it won't, it won't i won't spend a lot okay i was just time. curious what the formality had to be on that if it was a a single sheet of paper sort of thing of like yeah we get it you get it okay here sign or if it was a set of central okay central. okay well then so we'll, we'll so wait to get that what happens you. to the recorded agreement that they have us so they're gonna well that well we can record this agreement too okay it does it does still relate to the land you can't record it mm -hmm. so so the, the chain of title is clear that they're not bound by a holding tank agreement okay okay so you so in, in that case i would just request a, a motion to authorize my preparation of that agreement okay a motion uh to authorize the preparation of the uh, release of the holding tank agreement and the escrow funds uh for mangat dentistry second Roll call, Peter. Hi. Jim. Hi. And Sue, just a point of clarification. I think there were some minor costs we incurred or charged to the township for processing the, the sewer module for that, if I'm not mistaken. It's well, very nominal. We'll double check. I just it. want to make sure the township gets. I don't know because we used the treasure. Yeah. So we'll, he would know that okay. on the top of so I don't. Before we release it, we'll make sure that yeah. there's not any. Yeah, just to make sure your yeah. fees are covered. The DEP denied that sewer so that's why they're they don't want to uh, pursue more. But, but so there are costs to be heard costs to I know, process. I know, I know. And now following the know. agreement when it gets reported, there's those expenses. Right. So I would say you will hold on to that escrow until all fees yeah. have been. I mean, then they won't be returned the full amount of their escrow. Okay. And I think I'm pretty sure they'll be okay with that. Or you return the full escrow and then you check for the cost right. for all the fees, however yeah. they want to. Yeah. They're, they're usually pretty easy. To yeah, they're, so yeah. they're asking, like, do you yeah. want us to hold on to it for a bit or do you want us to potentially send you a bill for some of this stuff? You can wait until I get your the, the soil, yeah, The soil wasn't suitable. Yeah. Uh, the, so soil the soil wasn't, wasn't suitable, suitable to put in a tank. No, it wasn't no. suitable for an on lot system and they were proposing a tank as part of a module. As part of the means of addressing sewage for the subdivision, yeah. and DEP didn't feel it. They didn't want to. They didn't want to have a tank. They didn't want to allow that or permit that to happen. Yeah. This is this is one of the risks that I was saying about like in town. I'm not a fan of the sewer, but there there comes a point where somebody could have a failed system, and DEP could say, "Well, it's nice. We're not giving you a permit for the tank." Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's that's that aren't they wonderful we work with? Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Stonecroft Village deed for the open space lot 215. Uh, this was part of a small section in section number eight that was conveyed uh, mistakenly to the Stonecroft HOA. Uh, last I have as an update, we're still waiting to hear back from uh the uh, the developer stone for that landmark. Did, landmark thank you. Um, did we get anything about? I, I feel like this is a never-ending saga. <laughs> Pursuant to the board's direction, I followed up with counsel for landmark Tyler Eshelman. Literally the day after the last meeting, he expressed that this wasn't an issue and he would have corrected deed sent to me for my review within the next two three weeks and. Never happened. Okay. So I don't know if there's an ulterior motive or this is just not something high on his he priority just, list. Just but, forgot about it, I'm sure. I'd, I'd like to think anyway. I'm happy to give him another call at this point. Yeah, I'd, I'd say call him again. Right. Um, one other matter. Yes. Just for the benefit of the audience and also of the board members. Stonecroft Village. So I had a call. A conversation with um, the Berks County Conservation District. They, the developer is is was pursuing renewing the NPDES permit for that project um, because it's getting close to or it has just expired or something. And it all related to that one open space that was holding water. Mm -hmm. Now, was everybody aware? Or anybody aware here at the township that? There had been past modifications to the NPDES permit, yeah, and some plans with that. And that that 
area, that open space area was, there was an under drain installed with a valve. Mm. And the valve is to remain closed so that the water infiltrates. But the conservation district came out to inspect after a rain event to see if it was draining. And apparently the valve was open, which means there wasn't any water standing in the bottom of it. So he's trying to work through and convince himself that it will still infiltrate as originally designed because the valve is to remain closed unless it does not dewater and for whatever purposes the valve could be open and, and drain. So I just wanted to check and see if, yeah, number there, one, the HOA was aware of all that going on uh, as well as the township because we've seen it in other municipalities and the developer goes in and gets a, a new MPDS permit and modifies it and it changes the stormwater system and they never relay that to either the municipality or the homeowners in the community. And it's just a whole breakdown of communication because DEP does not have a means or they don't pursue making sure the municipality is aware of those changes. Yeah. So Surprisingly they, enough, they did actually well, that's good. communicate that one. Good. The other, the other shoe is that uh, our engineer at the time rejected that. Mm. Uh, the, the changes were not... Uh, sufficient or, or proper, but our county conservation approved it anyway. So when they're in they're within their right yeah, to do that, so. that's that's not a problem. But yeah, yeah there was yeah. We, we had objections okay. on our part and then they, they okay. just kind of went with it anyway. So yeah. Okay. I was just getting up to speed on the fact that there was changes to that, which is why that basin was holding water, because just here or uh, late Last winter, we were we had some complaints about the water in the basin, <laughs> and I was, you know when you look at the reported plan, it's not giving you the full picture because of the NPDS permit modifications. That went on. And now that that valve is closed, there'll be a lake there next year. And and so that that is going to be a, I think a problem for the conservation district because then the facility is not functioning as it was intended to. So that NPDS permit probably will not be closed out and you'll have to do things to mitigate. Um, but the infiltration is a requirement. Yeah, I know the residents of Stonecroft lovingly call that lake will be gone. So <laughs> they, they, according to the memo that we got, yeah. they're not going to get back out there. Oh, because they're back. yeah, the conservation district. Yeah, I know they're very backed up. So things, yes. hopefully there'll be enough rain Right, that you can observe it and see it. Schedule. And if it's holding water, then, then yeah, then it's going to be something that have to be done. Well, I'm understanding. Okay, sorry, I just wanted to check in on that. Okay, uh, if we don't have anything else on that, I'll move no. on to the next item. Uh, this is for the uh, purchase of replacement Office computers and a couple of Microsoft Office 365 subscriptions. Uh, we discussed this at Saturday. The Two workstations that are in the office there have reached kind of their end of life. We've limped them along as long as we can, but they're easily eight, nine, ten years old. They're they're due for it. So I'm going to get some inexpensive little tiny desktop workstations that'll that'll fit the bill. It'll be good for another three to five years, and we'll get the the office licenses so that you guys have um, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, stuff like that that you need to do getting the, the stuff prepped for meetings and et cetera, uh, and then also be able to back up content out to the cloud. Um, so I'll work on getting that squared away between now and the next meeting, and uh, maybe by then, with any luck, we'll be on the new computers. Uh, the next item is the robocalling and emergency alerts. Uh, we did receive quotes from Civic Ready and OnSolve Code Red Alerting. Um, some of the other municipalities in the area do use uh, the Code Red reporting um i think we need to we need to look pretty thoroughly at what this is because i know i've used some other systems at work where they they have some hidden costs on things like there's the the standard subscription but then there's a cost for x number of text messages over a certain amount or they charge you per thing or um, we just want to read the fine print on that and make sure that we're we're getting what we actually need um, Realistically, we want to have something that would have the capability of sending out a text message alert or an email alert or doing a full robocall. It could be something like, hey, there's a snow emergency, target the people on Main Street and then call the surrounding areas or, hey, there's a trash delay or there's a recycling delay or whatever the case may be uh, that we can 
leverage that record a message or to just let it churn through calling people. Um, so don't want to do anything with it right now. I want to dig into the, like I said, the fine print and then maybe for next month's uh, actual board meeting after we talk about it at the workshop, we can, we can move on. You can um, schedule that trash delay call for everybody. Yeah, pretty much. Um, pretty much. Yeah. At that point, they could they could just move the date and be okay. That's what they should do. Every everybody gets picked up yeah. on Wednesday now. Like I told you the other day, we should say we're going to pick it up Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or yeah. maybe on Thursday. Put put the bin out and we'll get it at some point. Um, with that said, I think we still have one more year that we can renew on that trash agreement. Um. We did that last year, right? Yeah, but I think we got a total of It three. was two more years, but it was last year. Yeah. We got it right. So actually, maybe maybe we do have yeah, It wasn't this year. March. It was last uh, month, right? Either way. We it's have two more years. We still, still Okay, so we still have at least one renewal. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's two more years from last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this year and next year. Yeah. So when we put it out to bid, I know everybody's unhappy about the delays and the way Eagle does things, but... Uh, in a lot of respects, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't, especially because when we put this out to bid, it was two, almost three times as expensive for everybody else. It was astronomically high. Um, and we're going to have to be prepared for a little bit of sticker shock when we actually do put this out to RFP again because we've run out of renewals. So we can hope that the, the general climate of things shifts and it comes down a bit, but I, I don't think that's the way things are going. Mm -hmm. If anything, it's just going to get more expensive. So with that said, on to the next thing, which is the emergency management coordinator report. Uh, John, since you are actually here tonight, do you want to come up to the podium and give us your report? Yeah, uh, you can if you want to. I'm not going to rob you of that. No, I'm good. Um, only real changes since Saturday. The, I did uh, leave messages with PennDOT and MedEd about the uh, extensive amount of trees and wires over on uh, Sioux Charming, Charming Forge. Forge and Forge. I let them know. But it's still been just messages, mm -hmm. so I'm still going to try to physically talk to someone. Um, wish me luck. The I stopped out at... Uh, mainstream and got the updated quote from I'm on the traffic control stuff, the uh, cones and everything that we talked about on Saturday, um, everything that we need, a couple changes, and they, they dropped some pricing for us. Um, and the only question is, uh, I have been getting quotes for trailers, you know, something small, and pretty much everything is in that 4,500 to 5,000 range. Because again, to be able to keep all this stuff in it, if it's here, so Butch can easily hook up with it. Um, myself, we uh, work some other uh, possibilities out when we need it. Um, but I have that, and I just basically I need to know is that something I'm continue working towards to take, get some final quotes. Take a look at it, but I don't think we're going to have it in this year's okay. budget to do. So it's if that's something that we want to do for next year, then. We can bring that up. Because I really looked up, she said there is uh, 4,500. I haven't used that in my budget yet. So. Yeah, but I, I think the other the other thing that you have is some of the like the signs and cones and stuff like that, which would would chew through. I think more than more than a good percentage of that. Peter. Yeah, so that would take out basically two thirds of that. For the additional signage, phones, markers, things like that. So, just as a, a recap, I know we had a we had a wire down on four twenty two. Sure. Um, I believe um, correct Marion Township was out responding to that. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yep. So just for the, the purposes of people on the Zoom and the recording, there was a line down on 422. We had responders from Wolmelsdorf and Marion Township Fire Company. Um, ultimately, it turned out to be a Verizon line, which is not a, a voltage carrying line. But uh, yeah, it's we first responders don't touch lines until they, they know. So uh, ultimately, when they came out, it was a very easy thing to fix. Took them about 15 minutes. But uh, there was a lot of, lot of waiting while we waited for the right people to get there. So I guess thanks, special thanks to Marion Township and Mobile Store for, for dealing with that. But uh, if there's some things that we can preemptively get in front of, uh, get MedEd to come out and trim some lines. If we see things that are Verizon or AT&T or whoever, get them out here, trim the trees before it takes out a line. Okay. Very good. Thank you, guys. Okay. Um, with that, uh, one of the things that you had in here was that we should update our burning ordinance. There's uh, a state one or a county one that we could. Okay. Okay. So yeah, what when we have it, let's review it. I, it needs to be updated. It's fairly old as ordinances go. Um, do we need? Is it sufficient to make a motion to rejoin the municipal league based on the fact that it's there, or do we need something? Because I think it's like sixty bucks. So you skipped number eight. Oh, did I? No. Uh, no, no, no. The um. Oh, okay. Sorry, it's on. It's eleven. Oh, so I was just going by the notes of rejoin P PA municipal league. So I'll, 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 I'll table it for a second. Yeah. There. Okay, cool. Um, we'd also, just as a kind of takeaway, we'd, we would like to sit down with the fire company and have a meeting with you guys because that's something that we've not done collectively as a board. Find out if there's things that you need from us, things that we might want to see from you. Just kind of get everybody together, have a nice friendly discussion about uh, the state of things. Is that something we could, we could go through you, Mervyn, or would it be better to go through one of the people at the fire company? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let us know if we can. Okay, very good. Um, and then John had supplied a quote for uh, additional emergency scene ahead signs, uh, the roll-up variety for easy storage. Yep, I, that's what the one that I have. Uh, road closed ahead. Um, the fluorescent, uh, I'm assuming it's the fluorescent yellow ones rather than fluorescent orange ones. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, uh, compact sign stands for putting the signs up. Uh, some 28 inch traffic cones, a uh, total of 50 of those actually. Uh, eight cone bars, which are bars that go between the cones to create a sort of barricade. Uh, a, a dozen electric LED flares, which are just essentially really bright flashlights and uh, some high water cone signs. This the total. Okay. And yeah, that's that's, it's like 13 bucks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, Colin, for the, the purposes of the record, should I list off how many the amount for each one of the things, or does it really matter? No, just what's the collective amount, approximately. Okay. Collective total for this is $3,183.50. And I, I did verify we do have that in the EMC budget. So um, I'll make a motion to authorize uh, the EMC to purchase the items as outlined on the supplied quote for a total of $3,183.50. Second. And that's not just for 
I yeah. can be used by a regular group of whatever we need to cover. Yeah. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay. And uh, since the recording probably didn't pick it up, these are things that are not uh, single purpose. So they can be used for plenty of other stuff, road work, emergency closures, n a number of things. It's things that we, what was that? Car show, yeah. And say uh, there's lots of different uses that we can we can make use of these things from. Uh, it's not like we're just going to buy it and it's going to sit in, a, in a, a room somewhere and collect dust. They'll they'll make they'll make a lot of uh, appearances, I'm sure. Yeah, that's that's one of the benefit. That would be one of the benefits of having a trailer. So since it's a pretty big expenditure, this is something that we're we're going to want to try to work into budget rather than just trying to figure out if it can squeeze in somewhere else because I, I don't think we have like I think at the after this there's like eight hundred dollars left in the EMC budget. Okay. When it comes to the sewer project, when do we think that will begin they're actually breaking ground? It's like five years give or take two months. Yeah. Um, because just in pre-planning and stuff like that, once they start breaking ground, there is no close capability for yeah. us for anything, for any kind of trench rescue operations. Our closest team is Boyertown, followed by uh, Yorkville and Pottsville and then City of Harrisburg. Yeah. Um, I've talked to all the rescue companies around us. There's a little bit of stuff here and there, Spring Township, Raridsburg. Uh, Lebanon might have a little bit, but this is... That's one of the things we got to talk to the fire company about. We really got to pre-plan this before we actually get in the ground rather than yeah. wait until we have it. Because okay. when I was with Spring Township, we okay. had several trench collapses and fatalities during the project. And I don't want, I'm not waiting for that to happen here to try to figure out how we'll fix it afterward. Yeah. Thankfully, you know, we're, just, we're still a ways off. Yeah, and just okay. so you know, there, I don't think there's going to be a lot of deep trench work on that because it's a pressure force main. So it'll be shallow, three feet, three and a half feet. That's, that's, that's what they said in Spring, too. I hear you. Yeah, there's always there's always a danger, no. but it's also a lot less dangerous than like a twenty foot. Correct. So, okay, so uh, we're going to need to update the burning ordinance, but we're going to need to have that for review. So we got a table agenda item number ten for the time being. Item number eleven is to rejoin the municipal league. Uh, I'll make a motion to rejoin the municipal league. So, roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Uh, yeah, they were actually very nice to provide some help, even with us not being members for some things that we had reached out for. So we're still getting emails from them. Yeah. Okay. Next item is the Creekview Dairy Operation, 952 Route 419. Uh, they have made all the necessary improvements at, and have submitted their notice of termination for the NPDS permit. BCCD is still reviewing. So if that gets approved, that's well. And I'm also, I also have the as-built drawings on that. I'm trying to run simultaneous with it. I actually stopped out this morning just to, to confirm one thing on the site. So um, if the as-built plans meet the township standards, um, I think I'll have a letter for the next board meeting for acceptance of the as-built plans and perhaps the release of the financial security subject to the NPDS permit being closed out. Okay, very so good. Cover the bases. I know this one's been an agenda item for quite a while. It'll be very nice to see it close. Okay, next is the culverts and related site improvements on Marion Drive North, Sheridan Road, Marion Drive South, along with paving and guide rail improvements on Reichert Road. Um, Engineer Hess had put them out to bid on PenBid, and we did receive bids uh, on June 22nd, 2023. Uh, give me just a second. I will scroll to the bid tabulation sheets. And while you're scrolling, um, I could just um, chime in a little bit. You know, I provided a recommendation letter yesterday um, for the board's consideration, and the bid tab, I can just quickly go over um, what it in, the costs and the bids that were received. So we received three bids basically to install the three remaining precast concrete box culverts that the township purchased um, and also to finish up the paving and guide rail work at Riker Road. 
So the apparent low bidder um, or the low bidder is uh, was submitted by Construction Masters Services LLC out of Sinking Spring for a total bid price of five hundred eighty-eight thousand five hundred forty-two dollars and fifty cents. Uh, the second low bid was uh, Dolly Construction Corporation out of Chalfont, PA. Uh, their bid was $851,941.00. And the third bid that was received was from a Kevin E. Raker Construction LLC out of Sunbury uh, for a bid price of $867,500. Excuse me, six hundred seventy-two dollars and fifteen cents. Um, you know, the second and the third bidder were very close, so it means that tells me that they they're seeing the same things on plans and specifications. Uh, the low bidder, of course, was was substantially lower, uh, in my opinion. Um, but still, I think that the, the costs were a little more than I was anticipating, um, which is could be a sign of our current um, state of our economy in the country with inflation, supply chain, what have you, labor. Um, but again, I think it was a little more than I was anticipating. It, it could also be a reflection that, you know, we bid it here now in, in the summer, in the middle of the construction season, um, where most contractors already have their work lined up. And this was a pretty substantial project, but we did give them nine months to complete the work uh, because it is the four sites mm -hmm. and we identified you know, the order in which they need to be completed, but we wanted to give them some time and flexibility that they didn't have to commit you know, really to getting it done within a, a, a compressed time period on top of everything. Yeah. Um, so with that, you know, the recommendation is for the board to consider that that low bid uh, that was received from Construction Master Services, LLC. Um, I will add that if the board does provide a recommend or, or does consider awarding, accepting the bid and awarding the contract, the solicitor would like a, an opportunity to review the bid documents, which we did in our office, but to uh, you know make sure the insurance certificates, the bid bonds, and all the other paperwork is, is up to snuff from a legal standpoint. Okay. So we will provide that to, to the uh, solicitor's office. I, I, I do have two questions. Mm -hmm. Can you reason the wide discrepancy between the lowest bidder and the two other bidders? The only thing I could possibly conclude is the geographic distance that the second and third bidders were coming from, from their base of operations um, in Chalfont and Sunbury versus Construction Master Services being in Sinking Spring, a more local contractor, and uh, Construction Master Service has done projects for the township in the past. Yeah. So they, they kind of know what they're getting into um, and know what to expect for the most part. So I think that might have been a little more of a comfort level. Uh, the other two, maybe it was just coincidental that they were so close, um, but maybe they were busy. Maybe they were factoring in some other things. I, I don't know. I can't. So you're, you're, not, you're not concerned by that one gap? I am not. No. We've had construction master services do other other work before. They've been lowest bidder other times. Okay. Culverts are paid for. Right? The culverts are paid for. What was the well, the culverts are are uh, Riker Road was paid for. Um, let me let me. Re they're re not paid until let me rephrase they're delivered. That. I believe they're they're fully allocated. Yes. Right. The first one has cleared. Well, that's. Yeah. How much was the, how much was the culverts? Grand total. Three hundred sixty. Yeah, I think it was three hundred sixty. Like the cost of the culverts, yeah, was not included. In that yeah. is correct. Yeah, and this is for the installation. But, but this is this well, is demolition of the existing structures there, traffic control. Uh, yeah, this is watering the whole gamut that the every, township went through on Riker. Right everything else, crane yeah. rental, excavator, yep, manpower, final you know, paving, paving, guide rail, guide rail, the whole thing. What did we originally think we were spending? Want to say somewhere in the neighborhood of mid five hundred thousands. Now we're almost a million. Yeah. I know. Yeah. We can't go after him. I'm going to ask this question for the well. Last time. Well, again, that that opinion was premised on the notion that the township could do the work itself. Yeah. 
Yes. So that, but that, it's premised on we might have been able to do it ourselves if we had bid it. Yeah, and, and so this had to be bid up with prevailing wage rates. So that does right. add 20, 30 percent in our in my experience yeah. to the numbers versus the township self-performing. But it was bid improperly, so we couldn't do it. Well, well, but the township did get economies of scale by bidding the manufacturer mm -hmm. of the culverts altogether. Yeah. So we'll I'll tell you exactly where this is going. Within the next before these sewers are ever even put in, we're gonna end up having an emergency. We do not have the money for any of this stuff. That cost just almost doubled because we got poor advice from the former engineer. And you're telling me that he pays E and O insurance, doesn't even he might as well just not pay it because he doesn't need it. You can't go after him for anything. In my opinion, there's well, something well, with this. What, whether the township had the ability to use liquid fuels money on this project is separate and apart from whether the township actually had the capability of doing the construction work itself. I mean, my, my, my point is ultimately the cost would have been roughly the, the same if this work was not bid, right? So the, the culverts would have cost $400,000 and they would have been paid from the liquid fuels fund or the general fund, right? The, the reason why we're spending more money is because the township hit a point where it realized, no, it can't actually do this work. And, we, and, no, we and, hit a and, point that we and, realized we couldn't do the and, work because and, it was bid incorrectly, and yeah. we can't do the work. I mean, the, the biggest the biggest stopping block was the guide rail. Like, the guide we, rail we and the paving. And the paving, yeah. Those are the, 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 right two, the, the two did things. not have either the equipment or, you know, yeah. didn't, didn't solicit quotes for the guide rail and, and yeah. so forth and so on. So it's it's a change in tax. The, the thing that is really unfortunate at the heart of things is that the fact that because it went out to bid, it's twenty or thirty percent higher. And, and, and we can't use liquid fuel. Yeah, yeah. The the only thing I could add is you know if, if the township decided it was too expensive, you know I talked to Monarch. I let them know we were bidding it. So they're storing them. They have not been paid for those other three culverts. Mm -hmm. And and they appreciated the update that we were trying to move the project forward so that they could be delivered and then they would receive the payment for that. Um, if this cost is a concern, the only other option would be to bid it again. Um, and, you know, perhaps, you know, as, as the construction season winds down towards fall, and we're in the winter months, November, December, January, and it's put out the bid when contractors are a little more hungry for work mm -hmm. and trying to, you know, line things up. We, we might get more competitive bids. We might get more bids. There's no guarantee, though. Mm -hmm. so, so pretty much guaranteed it's going to go up. Yeah, as I say, it's, and, it's only going to go up the longer it sits. Yeah. I, I don't disagree with you. I'm trying to offer you that option. Yeah, the only, the only. I don't want to call it a silver lining, but the only silver lining that we have is we did previously in prior years budget for road work out of the general fund. And that ultimately any of the un, unused allocations got moved over to the money market, which is why we have almost 400,000 money market. So we do have, without better terminology, a rainy day fund for if something goes higher on road work than we were anticipating. I don't like how high it went, but it's it's not going to cause us to have to merge with another township. Either you're going to you and I mean, it's that big time. And I know how you can feel about raising taxes the same as I do. Yeah, you gotta, I'm telling you, you got to do what you got to do. We're we're to, we try to avoid it. We are out of money, and we have roads that are in horrible shape that we just discussed. We could put eighteen million dollars into roads. Obviously, they were eighteen million dollars. Clearly, we not ten to do the sewers. So maybe yeah. we should close the playground and plant money trees. <laughs> I think that's what we need. Yeah, if you if you have one of those, let me know. But I, I would. The, the only thing I can offer, if it, if, it, if it provides any comfort whatsoever, 
I, I'm, I was just running some of the numbers here, you know. Um, so the total cost, like you say, for this these four culverts is is nine hundred and forty eight thousand dollars. Okay, that's four culverts. That on average is two two hundred thirty seven at each location. Now that's a little skewed because the township sort of did the Riker yeah. Road portion, so I'm not factoring that in. But that that two thirty seven is what I would probably anticipate. For those structures, um, you know, they're they're they have a pretty good span on them. They're mm -hmm. they're substantial structures. They're they're almost you know anything over eight feet. PennDOT considers a bridge, and and I think all of these boxes were at eight, or definitely mm -hmm. somewhere over eight feet. So if you look at it in that regard, it it, it does seem to fall in line with what I would expect for a box call. The other unfortunate reality is this is all of these have hit the point of no return roughly at the same time. Yeah. And, and we're gonna have more. Well, I, I don't know, you know, and that and that's another planning thing that you know, working with the roadmaster, what he's planning on or what he's identified as other areas, you know, we should start creating like a five and a ten year plan and start hitting, you know, some of these things proactively planning for it. Yeah. Because you know, after this is over. I do know you have a pretty good liquid fuels fund. Mm -hmm. So as long as we do everything from here on out that we can utilize liquid fuels, it, it will help ease the pain to the general fund or any other funds yeah. the township has. Yeah, we have a pretty good balance so what that's in the mm -hmm. liquid fuels fund, which originally that was that was going to pay for the whole the whole thing. Let's just make sure that when we do merge, that they have a nice building so we don't have to get that out. Yeah. Hawken has a pretty nice building. That, that, that maybe have to be. That's where we're headed, Don. Not, maybe not in my lifetime, but that's where this township is. Uh, I hope you plan on living more than five years, but based on your, yeah. your prior statement. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that said, at the matter at hand, what, what I want to do, and Jim, please feel free to, to weigh in for discussion, is um, let's uh, award lowest responsible bidder contingent upon the solicitor's review, bid, ins uh, bid uh, insurance certificate, bond, et cetera. Uh, but let's also then for next month, we'll crunch the numbers, we'll figure out what has to come from where. Like for example, we have money that we had moved over from the money market just as a, like it's a long-term carry thing that we're gonna use it at some point. Um, move that back over and then amend the, the budget so that it reflects the fact that we're spending more than originally anticipated on that. So, okay. you're in alignment with that? Okay, I'll make a motion to uh, award the bid for the culverts and related site improvements for Marion Drive North, Sheridan Road, Marion Drive South, along with the paving guide rail improvements on Reichert Road to the lowest responsible bidder contingent upon the solicitor's review of the bid, insurance certificate, uh, and bond to ensure their adequacy. Since we have no alternative, I'll second the motion. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Butch. Okay. Yeah, 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 please. I've seen some. Peter, Peter, do you want to make a motion to authorize? The township engineer to take any and all steps to notify the lowest responsible lowest responsible bidder of our intent to award the bid. Yes. So so do you do you have that? No, no. Okay. So I can get it off the recording. I'll, I was gonna say I'll make a motion to authorize the engineer to take the, the necessary yeah. actions to inform the lowest responsible bidder of our intentions. Second. Jim second. Yes. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. So what that entails is now I will send to um, Construction Master Services a, a notice of intent to award. Mm -hmm. He has 10 days to get the contract documents back to me, and then I get them before the board for signature, and then we'll schedule a pre-construction meeting, work out schedule, logistics, and everything with the Roadmaster, and... Um, then issue a notice to proceed at that point once all the contract documents are in place and ready to go basically okay. get the project moving okay 
And so once engineering fees are added into this, we're going to be able to move again. No, I don't think it's that painful. I hope so. Yeah, we'll see. And again, I think it's it's the it's the factor of four. If you were doing most municipalities would be like maybe one of these a year, but you had four compressed in in, yeah. in one year. Basically. Honestly, the other three, I don't think they'd make it another year. And that's you know that's the thing. I mean, they were in such poor condition, you had to do something. Yeah. And, yeah. Years ago, we put a pipe on there and filled it in with. Uh, Unfortunately, that's changed for, for good, bad, or indifferent. Those, you know what? Some of those are still there. Yeah. Uh, but you were going to... Well, uh, Jim, <laughs> Jim sort of answered my question, but uh, 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 how soon can we get Rockford Road going? Uh, again, so tomorrow I will get out to the contractor the official notice of intent to award you know, that tells him the board is taking action. He gets his paperwork in place. Now he gets his uh, performance and payment bonds in place. Um, and as soon as they get back to us, then as soon as I get the township to sign them, and that can be done at the pre-construction meeting, I think, because I'm thinking you're authorized here to do this. So, you know, 10 days plus another week or so to get something scheduled for a pre-con meeting. And then at that point, we'll know what the contractor's schedule is to get going and when they'll start. Because last week, uh, John and I were driving around and we checked the other culverts and the one on, on North Marion. They, they <laughs> that get that attention. <laughs> is the plate still doing what it needs to do or is that uh, it's, it's going down a little and, and uh, it, if you watch... If, if you're standing there and see traffic going over it, it, it mushrooms down. We, yes. want to, we want to keep an eye on that. Yes. We really do. Yeah. So, if, it, if it gets to a point where it's... We may have to close yeah. the road, you know, or look at some other options to try and help keep it open for a very yeah. short duration. But, you know, if the contractor's coming on board, you know, we identified Riker Road getting that finished first. Yeah. You know, we could change the priority and get started I mean, on Marion Drive. That's and, so close to being done. I know, but I, 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 I hate that, that would be my get yeah. that wrapped up. Uh, and, uh, yeah. I'm not I'm not worried about Rikers Road anymore. And I would agree. I, I drove uh, there this uh, morning since I was in the neighborhood. Traffic, traffic can go through there. And and, and you put barricades and not, up. Not that much traffic used to go on that road yeah. to begin with. Yeah. And uh but, uh, but you know we're Two months away from school starting, so it'd be nice to get that done. And yes. deal with the road yes. closure on Marion Drive North and get that one wrapped up this year yet. And then we'll see where, where it goes. And uh, the other the other two then I'm not worried about. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> but and that's a sign. You know, you yeah. had two that were really bad. Yeah. You know, so it's it's that factor of four that's really putting the pinch on it. All all four are really bad. Yeah, two it, two of them are to the point where like they should be closed. And, and that's and right. that's you know, so that's the cost of maintaining that infrastructure. That's, yeah, yeah. I, I know we all feel the, the the sting of this too much, but there's it's a bullet that we have to bite because it's not been done previously. Right. It, much like any of the other road work that we were talking about earlier, Jim. Yeah. It's it, it, it's not pleasant, but it's, it's and that's where reality. I think again, I you know I'd, I'd be more than happy to work with Butch mm -hmm. and start to set up a five ten year plan to be a little more proactive. Yeah, let me let me send you because I actually the years that I was the roadmaster, I have a, a map of the township that's split okay. into six zones. The yeah. theory being is that once we get out of the woods for like the culverts and stuff like that, we do ro road work yeah. each year yeah. in one zone. Yeah. We do line we painting in two zones work. and we yeah. just rotate. Yeah. That's that's the goal. But we have to get we have to deal with the fires. We got to put the fires out yeah. before we can start getting into it. And, and the liquid fuel routine. funds are there for the for those other. That other work to happen too. Yeah. So that's the only saving grace here. Yeah. Some degree. But yeah. you see what happens. I mean, these, the sewer project was going to cost us what two million to begin with. Uh, now it was like five. Six, yeah. Now it's at ten. Yeah. That's in that's that, in like a, that's, that's in a five to six year that's period. That's a painful of one. But yeah. look how long the township stayed that off. Yeah. You know but what that's mean? what's going to happen with all this. Work. It's the costs are just going up. Like 
And that's yeah. why you gotta work as it as it comes up. And yeah. you can't push things off. I mean, the only other alternative, which is not a, a pleasant one, would be taking out a loan yeah. for some of these things. But in, in absence of doing that, we do the same thing that we, we've done in prior years. We submit one or two projects to low, uh, low volume dirt and gravel. Yeah, that's sometimes, sometimes we get lucky on that. And otherwise, we try to fish for any other grants that we can get for road work or multimodal or you name it. If we're eligible for it, we'll go after it. Um, problem with some of those things like multimodal is we don't have multiple modes. <laughs> um, <laughs> which kind of, we count tractors. Horses and buggies. Yeah, anymore. I mean, that's not how I, I, I wanted to put a bike lane in, but we don't have line of sight. The, the nice, like, winding, picturesque country roads kind of make that all but impossible to do. Yeah. So, um, yes. So, the, the next plan would be we actually have one on deck here that we're going to be talking about tonight, which is addressing the drainage issues on Marion Drive. And then we're going to be looking at doing uh, some remedial work. Uh, I'll say hopefully before the line painting, but a little bit of like uh, tar, like the ceiling and then the oil and chip on a couple of the roads that need it. And then if we can find one that we would be able to queue up maybe towards the end of this year and in, into the spring of next year, something like a, I don't want to use this as, no. Well, the, the goal here, is this one is a, a pretty small project, grand scheme of things. Get the stuff ready to go out to bid towards the end of the year so that it's the first thing next year. Yeah. Now, uh, it, with the four culverts that we have, I, I don't want to introduce anything else into the mix. Even if we're paying for it out of the other pocket, so to speak, there's going to be a lot of moving pieces with getting those, those four projects done, and I don't want to divert attention on that. And that was the original plan, even before we had the whole thing with the engineer and the bid with the whole pen dot standard thing, was this is, other than line painting and a little bit like crack sealing, this is what we did for road work this year. That was our, our package. So we have some, some shifting, kind of like I said, from one pocket to the other, so to speak, of what we can use money-wise. Um, and we'll be finding the projects uh, for next year to use the liquid fuels money. And the goal would be to find that now now that we know, and put them out in I don't know, like October, November, something like that, when yeah. when the work season yeah. slows. Whole period. Yeah. I I have that from four years. Before. I can take swing around and like butch and honestly like open, open invitation if anybody wants to to put something in the hat of like this road is particularly bad. Like we know Sheridan's bad. But always school road. There's always school road. Um, but like Sheridan creates a, an interesting problem because of all the trees there. We have to cut the trees down. Otherwise, whatever improvements we put in there are going to be destroyed in like two years because of the, the freeze and thaw with any precipitation we get during the winter. So, so far. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll, that'll help. Um, and the only thing is, like Main Street's, Main Street's getting. Yeah, I, yeah. Main yeah. Street wasn't. So with, with the whole premise of, of eventually having to put a sewer in, I want to, and I, I hate to say it this way, I want to kind of band-aid certain roads that we know we're going to have to dig giant holes in. Yeah. I don't want to go through and put a nice, really good painting yeah. on it and then have to tear it up in like five years. So the goal here would be to target the ones that need it the most, obviously, but limp the ones along that are okay like for example uh, Stouchburg Road comes to mind that we we drove that and there's some alligatoring started that's one you you crack seal it you throw a little bit of oil and chip on and you get another three to five years out of it before you have to re revisit it but we also have other roads that like that section of Sheridan are absolutely atrocious so we need to figure out where because we, we we're in a, a I'll call it a target rich environment we have a, a, a endless list of choices but we need to figure out which ones are going to be not only good but will be a good use of the money and actually have some longevity to them so okay uh next item on the agenda unless we have anything more on that i think we pretty much exhausted that one uh is the temporary construction easements and permanent draining easements for the culvert replacements i know check I, 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 I do not have an update for that okay and only because i'm kind of waiting down and back up. Um, 
I had a couple other diversions related to bidding the culvert projects and another thing on Bollinger Road. Yeah. Now that we're going to be awarding the contracts, I will have to get those easements yeah. secured, and that's a priority for me next week. Okay. So more on that. Thank you, Chuck. Um, speaking of Bollinger Road, uh, we did have a situation where some fill material was introduced to the side of the road. It's a very, very steep embankment there. I believe it, it was, was it last year or a couple of years before the a trash truck actually overturned there. Um, however, the result of uh, Jackson and Marion Township adding some of this fill is the fill spilled down the embankment. Um, and we ultimately uh, needed to cooperate to remove it to, to satisfy BCCD. So your uh, agenda items 15 and 16 are really related. I can mm -hmm. tell you this on the Bollinger Road, the fill material, uh, the roadmaster myself met last Friday or two Fridays ago with the Berks County Conservation District. Mm -hmm. They were doing a follow-up inspection since the original violation report came out. Mm -hmm. And he was very pleased that yep. the efforts that were put forth by both townships to clean it up and get it stabilized. So when he was there, he was thrilled in the fact that we actually had grass growing on the shoulder. And, you know, that fill there alone is a safety improvement over what was there before. Yes. Now, um, uh, you know, so future road projects, I still think guide there's road. some warrant for guide rail there at some point. But we do want to give it some time to settle. The second agenda item 16 on the agreement, I can offer you this update. So solicitor, uh, the solicitor prepared an agreement for the property owners, and it's a husband and ex-wife, to sign an agreement uh, to allow the fill material to be there and to indemnify them of any responsibility related to it as, uh, as a result of the Brooks County Conservation District and, and, and appeasing them. Um, I was successful with one of the two properties. Um, I've been out, I was just out, and I've been trying to call Mr. Son, and he, it, it, it's, I don't, I don't know, he, he either doesn't hear his cell or he doesn't pick it up. So I actually stopped on my way home Tuesday night because I was hoping to have that signature for this meeting. Um, I, I sent an update to Sue and Colin here. He's taking some time to review that. Um, but I will continue to, you know, try and push him um, into signing that because that's that's important. Um, the other update is um, I did get as part of that violation notice, the conservation district wanted a site assessment plan, mm. basically showing them the limits of the fill material and as it relates to the stream and the floodplain and floodway of that, because that's going to help them determine. Um, what kind of permit after the fact permit that they yeah. will require. So I got that to them and they're evaluating. Okay. I know the conservation district is very busy, especially Jason Rickards mm. who's, who's on point for this. Um, so I, as soon as we hear from him, uh, what they determine will be required, we will get on it because then there's another deadline, I yeah. think in August that that gets submitted. The way it's looking, I am very optimistic that it's going to be um, not as severe of a permit that okay. it could otherwise just, be. Just a general sort of... A general permit versus a, a joint DEP Army Corps of Engineer permit, which gets into a lot more environmental studies and so forth. So okay. I'm keeping my fingers crossed on that and we'll be over this hurdle because the stabilization work that, that both townships did is was deemed acceptable. They're happy with that. Now we just have to, you know, get the original permits and get the property owner mm. to agree to that because that's integral as to whose name is on the permit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But by, by the nature of how this all unfolded, we're basically doing this in reverse. We are. Yeah, we are. Good, Butch. Uh, I did talk. To you need to stand in front of the microphone, Butch. I'm sorry, <laughs> you cannot hear. I I did talk to Tim. The, the Jackson Township okay, yeah, yeah, uh, sure, yeah. uh, this morning, yeah. and he he did get some bills. The yeah. bills are being sent to him. What we did, yes, materials. Mm. Uh, but uh, he's he's keeping them all one in line, and and then we're gonna discuss them yeah. uh, down the road, I guess. And I believe 
solicitor has talked to the Jackson Township solicitor with the agreement that mm -hmm. came to terms on that. Um, so I think everybody is on yeah. board and just working towards that end. Yeah. And that was one thing, the, the cost that was used to stabilize that material yeah. being split. So some help there. Okay. Very good. You know, just, to, yeah. just to follow up on what Chuck said, the solicitor and I did reach an agreement on the terms, although I haven't heard back from him since he said that he'd be putting it before his board. I I, I assume it's acceptable. I mean, it's really, really to the benefit of the property owner in exchange for both townships getting some st stability and, uh, you know, ability to, to, to know what's happening there. Yeah. Um, so, so hopefully Mr. Stone signs this agreement because it's, it's to his benefit. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have the, the utmost faith in you being able to be polite and persistent right. on it. And, and really addressing some of his concerns. Yeah. So he was concerned about the impacts of this as it relates to his uh, farm preservation. Yeah. So the Conservation District reached out to Berks County Farm of Ag. It's not an issue because this, this area was not productive ag. So there, there's no concern. So I shared that with Mr. Son and I told him he could follow up with the Conservation District if we needed to hear it from them. I do have an email that came from Berks County Department of Ag. I, next time I see Mr. Son, I'm going to take him a copy of that so he can see it and write it. You know, it's like anything. If, if he has issues and concerns, if, if we can address them, mm -hmm. then we can move forward. Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm not there to butt heads or anything. I'm just there to try and get an amenable solution to this situation. Yep. That is easy. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Streets. Um, Engineer Hess did supply us with a drawing, and there was a uh, preliminary kind of a opinion of probable project costs. Uh, this was a construction cost totaling basically just twenty-two thousand uh, dollars, and there were some potential. Uh, I'll say options or additional things that we could do that would, would total on an additional seven. Um, my understanding of the email that you had sent is that the uh, potential future project items are not requisite to this and can be added on at a later time. Very yeah, the, the basis for splitting them, as you know, when we met out on site and kind of looked at this and, and determined what would be the best, you know, the project, as I'm calling it, would be to and here's a bigger size so you can read I struggle because I struggle too. Yeah, so I, can, um, I can read that. <laughs> you know, it, it's installing uh, basically a, a storm sewer system where there is none today along the east side of Marion Drive uh, to mitigate and correct some flooding that's been reported by some of the residents again on the east side of Marion Drive. Um, and then in the future, you know, the pavement along Marion Drive is, is another one of those that's, you know, it's going to need some attention here in the future. And when it's repaved, the concern I had and from looking at site conditions is, you know, uh, uh, the road's pretty much flat and kind of slopes in certain areas, especially towards closer to the main street. It actually slopes towards the east. In other words, there's not a crown in the road down there and so when the future when it's repaved and we get a crown in there to get water to go off the road um the concern would be we trap water on the west side of marion drive so we accounted for that by showing some inlets that could be installed in the future as part of that paving project and they would tie into connect into the inlets along the east side that would initially go in and basically have knockouts in those boxes. So the boxes would be fabricated so we can connect into them at some point in the future when we, you know, when Mary, when it's determined it's appropriate time to, to pay Marion Drive. Um, so, yeah, it, it's really one project today for, like you said, roughly just under $22,000 is my estimate. Um, but it's setting it up for in the future if Marion Drive is, is resurfaced, so we don't create drainage problems and some 
ponding areas as a result of that paving project. We'll be able to install really some short sections of pipe, basically 50 feet of pipe, 25 in each location, and two inlets that you plug in, and then you can pave the road, and, and we'll have good drainage along both sides of Marion Drive at that time. So I know this is throwing a lot out, and and um, you know I think the next steps that the board would be so inclined is making sure giving this plan to our PennDOT municipal rep to make sure he's comfortable with it, so that we can use liquid fuels funds. And then um, I do want to coordinate with UGI to get a little more information from them on the location of the gas main, because this new storm sewer is basically going to parallel the, the gas, gas main that's there. And, uh, you know, just to make sure. Now, regardless of what information they have, you never really know until you dig it up. So you'll see there's some notes on there, basically the two cross pipe locations. First thing we would have a contractor do is to excavate, soft excavate down, find that gas main, see how deep it is, and make sure we don't have a conflict with it with anything. Post system, yeah. and then they could proceed from there if, if we determine we're all clear. Yeah. What I what I'd like to do with this is get the the pen dot pre approval for okay. going through that, and then yeah. get this kind of on deck as one of like the first thing in the the packet that we put out towards the end of the year for beginning of twenty twenty four. Okay. Yeah. Um, that, that that's a good plan. Yeah. Weren't we originally going to do the other side of the street? Originally, because uh, we much didn't want to dig near the gas main. So I think no, there's some room we can get. We can get this in there. That's yeah. the reason, though. To um, and the drainage problem is really on line. this side. And actually, if we go on this side, this is the problem. That existing pipe right. that comes across Marion Drive to this side, we want to connect up with that because right now that water is just blowing through and coming down into this property where, where the problem's yeah, been right. reported. When you want to turn that down, I think the topography is, is you have water coming this way, you have water coming right. this way, and then you have water coming off of the to this way. So you have kind of a choke point in the hand right there, and then it just doesn't have anywhere to go. It's just a little too fun. And I think I reported to everyone before, um, it's a pretty sizable area that drains there. Um, I'm just looking back to my file here quick, but I want to say it was roughly two, two, three acres <laughs> that, kind of that, that comes that. out of that pipe yeah. and also from these homes coming, you know, from the rear of those homes down to Marion Drive. And of course, there's a new system there to take it. So it flows across Marion Drive and continues down through the backyards and, and that's where it cumulatively starts to cause the problem. Um, so I feel pretty confident. Uh, this this would uh, help alleviate that. And actually, the, the two-phased approach was really to kind of like, well, let's do something, get it yeah. something going. And then in the future, we, we yeah. plan for to... I agree with you. Until that yeah. road gets repaved, putting pickups on that opposite side, it's yeah. that's not the direction that the water is running. Right. So yeah. um, the other one that I, I wanted to bring up, and I think I mentioned it previously, was the... Um, little uh, culvert thing on canal. Ah, that, yes. Every year that sinks, every year we throw black top. I, I did look at that, and that that might be one, again, I don't want to use any general funds. Yeah, no, that's drain li liquid, project. liquid fuel, please. So I would think we, we should approach Conservation District about dirt gravel low volume road funding. Let's see, hold on. We actually, or, we did that. And, and it, it, it didn't the, 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 the stipulations that they had on yeah. that were, were so prohibitive yeah. that poor, poor Mervyn, uh, they wanted a, I think it was like a 40 foot riparian buffer uh, uh, yeah. out. Yeah. There, and then the whole length of the property. So it, it would have just absolutely destroyed. Okay. So everything. you looked into that already. Yeah. That's not a possibility. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately. And and their new criteria, which remember we tried to get some of these are, are, qualified. Are even it, is, and I think they did that. I don't know. Maybe to take the low volume road aspect out. Because that program really is about dirt and gravel roads. Yeah. But a lot of municipalities were utilizing that low volume aspect. Um, so yeah, if that's out, yeah, we could that's, look that's at gonna that be, as our next one. That's so, going to be a liquid. I'll, I'll add that. that to the I list. believe that was like eighty or ninety thousand dollars, and that was a couple of years ago. So it's probably going to have to be looked at and adjusted to the fact that things have gone up. But um, that would be another good 
I don't want to call it a small project, but a relatively small project in the grand scheme of things. And and here's the other part of that. So the numbers you, mm -hmm. I would tend to agree with because this is not a box culvert situation. Yeah. However, it is unique in that there's not a lot of this a very lot room light. to put in a new structure. Yeah. Um, but we always try, and I try to do um, the most practical design possible that's going to work, it's going to get permitted, and will provide the benefit without going, box culverts are expensive. Box culverts are expensive. I'm trying to move a box culvert as much as I can. But those tracks are related. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll add that to the list. Yeah. And whenever you say get going on it, we'll, we'll get going on it. Yeah, so know? I know we, I, I have them somewhere, but I know we have the original specs of the car, the engineering. Okay, together. that would be helpful. We can send yeah. that over to you. Yeah. Um, we had kicked around a number of things and I'm, I'm absolutely open to different ideas yeah um but it was um i think it was essentially it was a box culvert ultimately is what they they had suggested and i don't know not being an engineer where that falls differently than if we put end walls and did like one of those graded surfaces because i it's technically a bridge then i think at that point but yeah and and it's world you know, service bridge it used to be years ago you could put multiple pipes in yeah, you can't do that anymore. DEP won't, but they don't like that because of how it impacts the stream and the ecology of the stream. Um, but we're there's some other options, maybe reprofiling the road a little bit or something. But yeah, the, maybe I'd like to see what McCord did. I'm sure it's has I'll some make good sure you justification. Get it. But yeah. if we can do anything else to economize that work, and yeah. we will certainly do that. Yeah, that that one's. A, it's a tough nut to crack because there's a house right there, which makes reprofiling the road difficult. The stream bank is, ex it's a, a tiny little stream, but the stream bank, like bank yes. to bank width is extremely wide. And that's what they want you to try and match yes. with a new structure. Yes. Because I've, I've been having a battle on another project like that. I finally got DEP convinced that we're okay because yeah, I have yeah. to get into the specific. But so, yeah, I, we'll, we'll get, we'll get the, it's the, on the list. Yeah. That's, that's the, when That's do you funny. anticipate starting this project? Uh, it would be spring next year. I mean, if we want to, yeah. since it's 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 below the bidding threshold, if we wanted to, well, that's the thing. Get quotes, you know, this but, is what I think maybe for, for for the next meeting. Yeah, let me run it through PennDOT get, get to PennDOT. get it liquid fuels on board. Yeah, and then we can solicit for some quotes. Okay. I mean, it, I don't want to. I don't want to muddy the waters with everything else going on with the culvert. But th if this is going to be a pretty easy open and shut, it's going to be. This should be a big project at, at the worst. Okay. Five days. You know, this okay. this is not extensive work. I, I, my arm could be easily twisted in doing that this yeah, year. Can, and, and I tend to agree with you. If yeah. we can yeah. solve that up. problem, use liquid fuels. Get pen Why would we get ahead? Yeah. Let's get caught up on some things. Okay, you know? okay. I'm also okay with that. So. Right. We'll, Make the uh, the dance card fresh for 2024 then. Okay, <laughs> I like that. Yes. Three dice, 1117 William Penn Boulevard. Hmm? This has been going on for at least seven to eight years. This over here, he's already have five thousand dollars for that project. No, that was given to you from the dentist. Hmm? Is this canal? Yeah, this okay. is canal, or not canal? Oh, excuse no, me. This no, is oh, Marion. 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 Okay. Okay. Why are we playing games with what do you mean by seven playing? seven years to do a culvert? But Marion Drive doesn't call it. Yeah, yeah, Marion Drive doesn't it's need a culvert. So, so, so Mar the, storm, the storm tour. Yeah. Why does it take seven years to do it? So if it was done originally, it probably yeah. would have been paid for with the original. No, it's the, no. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Pretty close. No, it, it, it's it would be maybe a little little less expensive but this was something that has always been there but it hasn't been high priority so as we've been looking at other things it floods i think i think we've had complaints about that once maybe twice in a seven year span when we have to allocate work or, or money to things it just wasn't high on the list but i was surprised when i saw twenty seven thousand. that's what things cost me I think he's. It's not the the sticker. He's he's asking why it took so long. Well, if if it if it helps at all, we now have a plan that we can implement and construct. Yeah, but now it costs triple the amount of money 
well, from seven but years ago, or perhaps, perhaps, perhaps I, 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 if you would have done it right away, it would be done. It's, I, I don't think it would and be it that pay pronounced. For. They didn't, they didn't pay for the whole thing, the Lee. They didn't pay for the whole thing, Lee. That was a, and I think, was it 5,000 or was it 2,000? It was 5,000? Okay, I'll take your word for it. But that was given as future enhancements. That wasn't like any deadline on that. We, we know that that pipe, like Sue herself even said, that was put in like, God knows when, like 30 years ago, and they just never finished it. So, yeah, point remains valid that pipe to nowhere. the pipe to nowhere. So there's there's things, and it's not like we spent the money that's still sitting in the account. It just didn't get used. So it's not receivable. Yeah, I say it's it's not like we said we're we're taking it and using it, or we we took it for a pipe and then we used it for something else. We took it for eventually doing a pipe and eventually is now. It's taken a bit to get there, but here it is. And I'm thinking here, yeah, with everything, yeah. all the stars come in alignment, you know, maybe after next month's meeting, you might be soliciting for quotes and you might see this done yet late this summer. That would be ideal. Yeah. Like I said, I have no problem with that. If we're going to go that direction, I'm not going to. Uh, upset about that so we had a caller just join in that may or may not be irene it's me hi irene what time is it it is 8 33. okay uh you joined us just in time for line painting so line painting oh. is going to be uh my proposal is to do zones five and six which is a total of Uh, it is seven miles worth of roadway, totaling 36,000 feet, 36,960 36, feet. Uh, this is a total uh, outside white length of 32,736 linear feet and a total uh, double yellow linear foot to uh, footage of 33,792. This would consist of School Road from Ketterman Hill Road to Wintersville Road, Post Road from the Township Line North to Smaltz Road, Christmas Village Road from the Township Line East to State Route 419, Stouchburg Road from State Road 422 to Wintersville Road, Woods Drive from School Road to Smaltz, Woods Drive from School Road to Spur Road, Smaltz Road from the Township Line North to School Road, Maltz Road from School Road to State Route 422, and then Ketterman Hill from Martin Road to the Township Line North. Um, we would, based on the fact that we don't want to use A1 line painting, uh, we will need to make some calls, get some people lined up for that, and if we don't find anybody that's interested or available based on cold calling people, next option would be to put it out to bid. So I'd say let's make some calls. I'll do some calling. Jim, if you have some time, do some calling. Irene, Sue. Um, we'll find somebody, give us some written quotes for this. And if we don't find anybody, July's meeting, we'll put it out to bid. Um, is, how have you done in the past with, again, we, we did the cooperative. Yeah, right. Okay. Oh, you mean just like the, the, well, to use liquid fuels again for this. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be reaching out to Charlie yeah. about Marion Drive. Yeah. And I think I should probably also bring up the discussion about this project. Yeah. And what you will need to see. Yeah, to get that work completed. Yeah, so that I, you could use liquid. Fuel. Yeah, we definitely want to use liquid. Fuel. You got that so, right. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, Chuck. Okay. Um, you guys. What was the t Thirty-three thousand seven hundred ninety-two linear feet. Uh, for the total. Yeah. It was thirty-six thousand nine hundred sixty. Thirty-six thousand nine. Okay. Linear feet of roadway. Um, obviously, outside white. You have to double that because there's one on either side. Uh, double yellow is right down the middle, but uh, for all of that getting painted, if you lump the two together, it's uh, 66,528 linear feet of line. 66,528. Thank you. Yep. And um, Chuck, I'll send you this and I'll send you the. I, Sue did send me your um, 
chart yeah. and the map. So I have that, and cool. that's what I'll share with Good. Charlie and make sure. Well, the, did, which map did she give you? Did she give you the highlighted one from last year? Okay, yep, so that's, that's the probably, one. I'll give you the one for, for this rotation of things, because okay. it's got different highlights. That's what was done uh, last year. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so you can't tell from that one, Zones five and six? No, not not you easily. No. Okay. So that was that okay. was the cheat sheet that I gave because I originally gave the guys that were doing the line painting the start stop, like this road from here yeah. to here. Right. They had a hard time figuring it out. So I, drew, so, I, so I drew them a picture. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll give you the the same picture for be, and then for then those. I'll have a discussion with Charlie about the different atmospheres. Perfect. I was going to see them in my picture. Okay. So do we do we need to make a motion to? Seven say so, so solicited quotes. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, I mean, we're not really authorizing anything either. We're just calling people to see if they can give us a quote. So, okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is to set the rate for the on mower tamper that we have. Um, we never really have rentals, other than I, I know another township did express an interest in renting our, our tamper, and we don't have a rate for it. So, I'm kind of of the mind that we rent it for 50 bucks a day from one municipality to the other. That's a similar rate to some of the other equipment, which is like $75 an hour for certain things, hundred bucks for the day for other things. Um, we would, in my opinion, we would not want to include the tractor or the operator. It would be a situation where you use the tamper and that's, that's it. But I don't know what, what your thoughts on that are, Jim. Was it was it Tulpa Hawken that wanted to use it or was it Jackson? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a great program to start. Yeah. You can share equipment and yeah. yeah. It, and it worked out well for Bollinger Road. Yeah. I mean, they they really both worked like yeah, I, like I said, I don't, I don't have a problem with it at all. The question is, is, what do we, what do we charge? And I, I don't, we're not, this well, is not money to, making endeavor. We don't want to yeah. price it yeah. even at or above market rate. Yeah, and we call it some rental. Yeah, I think 50, 50, 50 days. 50 days. Fair. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to set the rate for tamper rental to municipalities at fifty dollars a day. Second. Roll call, Jim. I mean Peter. Sorry. Hi. Jim. Uh, hold uh, on. Irene. Irene's on. Irene. Sorry, we'll call Irene. Irene. Aye. <laughs> Jim. Jim. Sorry. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the building property renovations. Um, we're still waiting for quotes from some of the demo salvage contractors, but uh, just was it, it was last week with the um, history and alumni rooms being open. When I went to close up because of the rain that we had, there is rain coming in that, that, that wall. wall. That wall. It was Where puddled. It, in? it was seeping in the wall. At the, the landing in the middle, there was yeah, coming in. Well, what I saw was it was coming in through the woodwork, like at the baseboard there. It was pooling and like just trickling in through that split. Yeah. So it might have been coming in multiple places. But and that's the wall on the garage door. No, that's oh. the wall on the other side of the building. Oh, yeah. Dollars. It's it's yet another wall that has some some fun in there. So I think yeah, the best the best thing we can do at this point is let's let's resolve to talk to the architect, get a plan of what we want to do, and then start chasing grants like crazy. So I'll make a motion. Make a motion. Mm -hmm. Get him started. Jim's making a motion. Uh, are you making a motion, Jim? Make a motion. I so which why, why don't we why don't we request a proposal from all right okay and then we'll have that motion to request a proposal from um it was olson design group. olson design group for the building project we need that anyway is there a second i'll second Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Can I just uh, make some comments? Yes, um, absolutely. So we just need to kind of collectively agree on the overall design concept. So I would push to have the garages 
separate. And since, I mean, I'm yeah. hoping that we're all thinking about doing the park at the same time. Yes. So combining that as, as one project would be ideal. Yeah, so we have to reconceptualize the park. That has to have ADA access. I would put the garages over there so we have more room for the building mm -hmm. and the storage shed. Yeah, so Irene, I will agree yeah. with you 100% that the, the garages should be separate. But what, what I would like yeah. to do is rather than disturbing the, the park footprint, because the, the MTCA does have a very nice plan that they were provided mm -hmm. uh, of the park layout, is we use the, the back half of the property and potentially look at rotating the garages uh, 90 degrees from the uh, what, what would be the direction of the salt shed right now. So does, does it give a, us enough space for four double bays though? That's it should. What we need. Yeah. So if you remember a month or two ago, I gave you a concept plan for using this site. Yeah. What I'm going to suggest is that I can or Sue, you can, um, you know, I can reach out to Lee Olson with Olson Design Group. I think it would be good to have like a scoping meeting here. Yeah. With you know, all or some of the supervisors and staff to talk about needs and John, maybe, because I know he's a big driver in that new building, and help him to understand where you want to get to. Yeah. And then we can work through the preliminary design or a conceptual design, even mm -hmm. with some cost numbers, perhaps. Yeah. Because um, right now I'm working, there, there's some rack, rack, rack P, I want to say, is the name of the funding that's out there yeah, now. Heard of it. That, um, and I think it's federal COVID it's, money. So uh, that might be a vehicle that we want to get in on. Okay. And I can share some of that information, what that program's about. Um, Lee is familiar with that. Okay. I'm working with him on this other project. And we actually have next week, we got to get our cost numbers in for, for this other project. Um, so I think, you know, to really hone in on it, we want to have a meeting with him first. Yeah. I mean, he can't just give you a proposal yeah. if he doesn't know what you ultimately want because you want Ford, a Chevy, a Toyota, you need to yeah. know to some degree how many doors and what, whatnot. So I will work towards getting something set up with him. Um, is there any particular day of the week or time that would work, or we just throw right. out some? Generally, afternoons work better for me. But uh, if, like if we have late, something like a late afternoon, later day, afternoon, if we have if we have something that fits for everybody else, I'll I'll adjust and okay. if need be, I'll take time off of work to. And then you know I'll share with him in the in the meantime, you know that concept we gave because it's a good starting point. You know, and it starts the discussion with the needs and so forth for for everybody. Yeah. Um, and we'll get going. So I'll try and get something set up and get some dates thrown out to you here. And you know, I, I think let's work towards something before the next board meeting in case. Yeah, I'd, you know, I'd you love to have get something a proposal to talk about. so you can accept the proposal and we can start getting engaged. And that sounds like a plan to me. Uh, Colin, yeah. you, you kind of leaned in. You want to say something? <laughs> I would remind Township that. Uh, to the extent from two board board members yeah. are present at that meeting, it, it would constitute a public meeting. You need to be yeah. advertised with if, an agenda. If the stars align and everybody's able to be there, we'll, we'll advertise. Otherwise, uh, like any number of other times that we've had things like that, it's we've thrown a date out there and then like one of us can be there. Right. Yeah. Which is not which is not a public meeting. Yeah. 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 If the board all wanted to get together though for something like that. We'd have to advertise it. Be advertised, and the public yeah. would have to be invited to it, even if they're not taking any action or anything. Correct, because okay. they are deliberating on we, we business. We potentially would would have a quorum if if something was talked about. So it's not makes it hard to work we, together on something. We've yeah. talked to the point of neighbors about buying a piece of the property. Do we know if that's one lot or if that's two lots. Over it's there? it's one lot. It's one lot. It's all one lot. Can the, we take a the piece next door? Of that if you, want me? you are. The township could take a piece of land. I, I'm I'm not super we're, warm and fuzzy about eminent domain. We're not there yet. Well, I'm not super fuzzy about it either. But yeah. if we need it, we need it. the concept. Plan, it yeah, the concept plan. You know, we did fit everything on this property. Would that have helped and added some parking? Yes. But the fact that you have this area across the street, you know, it might make sense to actually have a parking lot over there that serves that building. And then you just simply walk across Water Street and you're here at the township home. Yeah, it could also be parking for the playground too. That's what I mean. So, it, that parking lot would serve 
multi-purpose. Yeah. You don't need a parking lot here for would 50 it, cars all the time. Would it make life easier and better? Yes. But is it going to be a, a, an absolute stopping block for doing this? No, not really. Okay, uh, Irene, do you, have anything you want to add on that? Yeah, yeah, I'll just get some more information about what requisites we need for an evacuation center, heating, cooling center, because after attending that uh, grant workshop, um, some of those things may help us with obtaining more grants and funding. So yeah. I'll try to get more clarification on what those requirements are. Okay, very good. Sure. Yeah, the, the architect should be able to help us with that too, but anything we can go into uh, into that armed with yeah. is, is that much better. The wish so. list is always helpful. Yeah, oh yeah. What Here. you think, and then we'll, then yeah. we'll yeah. put it in. Absolutely. Right. We, we okay. just want to be more forward thinking over, we need this building to last quite a bit of time, at least until the mortgage is paid off. Um, but uh, having it address the needs that we have now and anticipating needs in the future, which is difficult, but we want to make sure that we're we're asking a lot of questions. So, and Chuck, thank you again for your input. We really help. We really appreciate it. Well, and I think on the invitation, I, I think John's there, Butch is there, Sue, of course, and any of the board members. But is there anybody else that you think we should consider for? I don't I don't think so. Cover it for now. That should cover it. Yeah, and that's more bare, than enough. Bare minimum for the preliminary. Advertise that anybody that wants to be there will be. Yeah. But yeah. the longer we wait for this, the more expensive it's going to get. We've we've discovered yeah, we, that we, things we get more this. expensive the longer yeah. we wait. We know. We know. I don't yeah. want this building to wait three, four, five years. No, I think we we all kind of agree. This one's going to fall down before. Yeah, we're we're at a we're beyond right. the tipping point where we either need to do something drastic with this building or we got to do something else. And I sure. I agree with you. Let's let's get. Let's get the architect in play. Let's yeah. see what we've got and let's start chasing grants. No, we're going to be renting property real quick. Yeah. This building is, now that we've got leaks on two sides, it's only a matter of time. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to the next item, the Comcast franchise renewal. Uh, Phil Fraga would like an updated list of addresses which Comcast is capable of serving. I know we have reached out to Comcast, but as of Saturday, we hadn't heard back from them about the, the address is capable of that. Uh, I suggested that we send the full list of properties over and then if Comcast wants to dispute it and give us the revised lists, then the ball's in their court. So uh, we'll need to authorize Colin to advertise a public hearing to adopt the renewal agreement. Um, is that, do, do we do that before or, because we don't have a, uh, a like an approved agreement at this point, right? You have to, approve the execution of the new agreement through an ordinance. But do we have the new agreement though? Because mm -hmm. we don't have the new agreement yet. I, I haven't I haven't seen one. We don't. Yeah. So that's why they want the list of all the property. So if, right, right. It's right. The customer based yeah. yeah. And so well, they know what to ask him. I just want to make sure that we're not uh, that I'm understanding the process correctly that we don't we're not putting the cart before the horse, that we're not setting up uh, an agreement on something that we don't actually have the agreement yet. Until until you have the agreement in front of you, I, I wouldn't take any action. Okay. Yeah. okay. Do you need authorization to share those addresses with them so that they can see that and work towards an agreement? Isn't okay. that what they're asking uh, for? So they gave me a list. Um, in here somewhere and it's still here it's it's the old address it still has rd1 whatever so it's, they're looking for an updated list of yeah they don't know what areas are service i mean not everyone in marion township has comcast yeah so they're you know, they're looking it doesn't run by everyone's house in marion township so colin do we need a motion to share that with the attorney because we already are under agreement with um with the She's Cohen Associates. I don't, I don't think so. Okay. okay. What I was going to do is just um, update our sewage management list, mm -hmm. put Stonecroft on. Yep. Um, 
and that should be every yeah. house. Yeah, in other houses that are in town. Yeah, that should be. Figure out where the, where that should be everybody, with the exception yeah. of Dutch Valley Foods, but I don't know. Yeah, they've got a tiny little the slice. Yeah. In there. Yeah. So that's what I was. Gonna... Yeah, I think that's a reasonable enough okay. method. Because I think once they have that information, then they can work towards getting an agreement to think, you. Yeah, yeah. And, and like I said, in the absence of us knowing, and to me, it's not, it shouldn't be on us to know what addresses Comcast can yeah, and cannot give serve. Them the give them the whole township yeah, and let them bigger. say like, no, we don't, we don't have service there. Let them fight it. So, yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the next thing is the Berks County Public Works Association meeting. This is being held on Thursday, July 13th, 2023 at the Oli Fairgrounds. Uh, registration is open until July 3rd. This will consist of educational presentations. Uh, some of them will be on uh, line painting, uh, equipment, uh, coatings, etc. We made a motion at the workshop to authorize the EMC, road crew, and any office staff to attend if interested. So. Butch and Donnie are gone. Butch and Donnie are gone? Yeah. Okay. Take notes. Um, Next is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403. This is the amendment about the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm animals. Um, Jim and I were at the last Western Berks Joint Planning Commission meeting on the 18th of May at Heidelberg. Um, there was actually a very large interest from the other involved municipalities about adopting this. Um, they want to maybe make a couple of little tweaks to it. And the, the consensus in the room was uh, everybody will kind of draft their own edits we'll compare notes, and then we'll present uh, what we all kind of agree on as a joint planning commission board uh, back to the boards of supervisors respectively for uh, consideration. And ultimately, if we can find a, a one size fits all for everybody in the in the joint planning. Instead of having that's, different requirements for everybody. Exactly, but everybody agreed that the existing uh, is not a good fit for them because when they actually looked back and read it, there was just about every single person non-compliant. They were like, ooh. Not great. And, and is the issue chicken by any chance? It's large. The chickens are one of the more common. I got ones. one another municipality that they're looking up bigger. Yeah. Chicken factory. Yeah. I think chickens are the most common, uh, we'll say, small domesticated farm animal mm -hmm. that you would have, but the ordinance does lump in some other yep. things. Covers all the bases. Yeah, exactly. So I think everybody's kind of looking to be a little more current and contemporary and actually reflect the reality of. Of life within their townships and municipalities. Yeah, they're the wild ones. Okay, next is the uh, stormwater maintenance ordinance fees and updates. Uh, this is one that we're going to table for now because we have to dig through that, and it is a pretty extensive amount of stuff that we have to dig through. That's a workshop meeting thing. And it's very confusing. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. And, and a little yeah. outdated, I might. Yeah. Um, I'm sure Colin or I could probably help provide some examples, perhaps. Please. Yeah, because we have we have a, a, a list of various fees that we had gotten from McCarthy Engineering, and it is extremely long. And it was like every single fee possible. Yeah, there was there was I want to say hundreds of items on that list, and unless you're an engineer, short of doing a stare and compare and going, okay, we have this one or don't have this one, and then just adopting all of them. Yeah, not all of them are very uh, intuitive. So this and, is something that we should. And I don't know how you've worked with that one you have current, which is pretty old. I always call you. I, I well, <laughs> but before me, oh. I mean, even then, and 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 the applicants are, are you know, reaching out to say, "Hey, this is what I think it is," but oh, so my gosh. it looks good. Certainly yeah. needs something. So I would say maybe if we want to, if the agenda looks good for the July workshop meeting, maybe have Chuck. If you're available that Saturday, come out, sit with us, go through it. Because what I'd like to see done is we update the fee schedule, we update the ordinance, and then we look at doing that, like that uh, little like self-help packet that you were talking about. Yes. To, that make feels things, to make things a lot easier, kind of attack it yes. in a one fell swoop. We do the stormwater yes, stuff. Because you advertise them once. And exactly. Costs. Exactly. Cover. Yeah. Exactly. And so. Maybe because there wasn't enough property. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we looked at that there's square footage wise. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't, didn't yep. Okay. Uh, thank you for looking in. 
Last item on the agenda is we received a notice from Qualtech Services Incorporated uh, about a bankruptcy document. Um, reading through it, the nearest I can figure is this is for old cell phones that we had years and years and years ago that it was a company that we had done business with at some point that is now going bankrupt and they were legally obligated to send us a notice. Um, I don't think we have to do anything with that at all. Like We don't have any outstanding claims with them. If anything, I'm pretty sure we paid the bills. Otherwise, they'd come after us for, <laughs> for money that they didn't, uh, didn't get more than a decade ago. But um, I, I think that's pretty much a form information purposes only sort of affair. So this time we'll go into comments. Um, I'll go through the police report real quick. Um, you gotta scroll down to that. Okay, police report. Looks like there was a relatively good month on the fact that we had a, a series of citations. There was uh, 14 citations issued, 16 traffic stops, uh, 57.5 hours for the patrol. Uh, miles patrol was 793. And uh, we had 20 security checks and two motorist assists. So busy month. Um, I don't have any other comments. Jim, do you have any comments? Okay. Irene, do you have any comments? Uh, no. Okay. Chuck? On the interest of brevity tonight, I have nothing. I appreciate it. Colin? Nothing. Okay. Melissa? No. Okay. Sue? Nothing. Okay. In that case, I'll make a motion to adjourn. The time is now 8.58. Second. Roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. Okay. Meeting adjourned. adjourned. Thank you, everyone.